All right, uh, good evening and welcome to this community meeting update on the Santa Rosa Highway 101 Bicycle and Pedestrian Overcrossing Project. I'm Grant Bailey, Supervising Engineer with the City of Santa Rosa Transportation and Public Works Department and Project Manager for this project. And I want to thank you for joining us tonight. Live interpretation can be heard on the Spanish channel. You can join the Spanish channel by clicking on the interpretation icon that resembles a globe in the Zoom toolbar on your screen. Before we begin the presentation, our host Lauren Wiley with the City of Santa Rosa and our interpreters Pablo Rodas and Charles Eidick will explain how the meeting will work. De la ciudad de Santa Rosa, quiero agradecerles por acompañarnos esta noche. Se puede escuchar interpretación en vivo en el canal de español y puede unirse al canal de español haciendo clic en el icono de interpretación que ahora aparece un globo terráqueo en la barra de herramientas de Zoom de su pantalla. And, uh... Okay, thank you, Pablo. As community members join the meeting, you will be participating as an attendee. Your microphone and camera will be muted. Only today's panelists will be viewed during the meeting. Please know the City of Santa Rosa is committed to creating a safe and inclusive environment free from disruption. We will not tolerate any hateful speech or actions and will monitor that everyone is participating respectfully or they will be removed. If necessary, we will also immediately end the meeting. This meeting is being recorded and will be placed on the city's website following the meeting. At the end of the presentation, Grant will open up the meeting for public questions and comment. Thank you, Lauren. Once again, I want to thank all of you for joining us tonight. The intent of this meeting is to give us give a status update to the community on the Highway 101 Bike and Pedestrian Overcrossing Project and provide a forum to ask questions and give input on the project. This meeting will focus primarily on the overcrossing landings on Edwards and Elliott Avenues and a meeting to discuss the overall structure that crosses Highway 101 will be held in the fall of this year. Your participation and input is important to us as we proceed through the project. Next slide, please. We'll start tonight's meeting with an overview of the agenda and the topics we plan to cover in the presentation. Uh, first, we'll start with uh, an project overview and a description of the project. Uh, then we'll move on to some milestones that have been uh, completed uh, to date. And then we'll move on to the next steps uh, for the project, which the team anticipates coming in the next months and years. Um, at that point, I'll then hand the presentation over to the project architect, Stephen Grover, uh, to discuss uh, some design considerations. And uh, I'd like to note that the topics Stephen will cover in the design considerations were topics Caltrans and the city received uh, frequent comments on during the environmental phase comment period. But if you have other concerns related to the approaches outside of these topics, I encourage you to bring them up during the question and answer portion of the meeting, uh, which takes us to the last part of our meeting, which will be a community question and answer session. Um, and again, the intent of this meeting is to provide a forum for the community to ask questions and give their input on the project. Um, so uh, participation at, at this, uh, or participation is encouraged at this uh, point. Um, to ensure we have maximum, uh, excuse me, to ensure we maximize the available time uh, to get your input, the presentation will cover topics at a high level with more visuals available for when topics come up during uh, the discussion and question, answer, question and answer session immediately following the presentation. I would also like to restate uh, this meeting will only cover the two approaches on Edwards and Elliott Avenues, and the structure spanning the freeway will be presented uh, to the visit City Design Review Board in approximately October of this year. Uh, next slide, please. All right, so we'll talk about a quick project description. Um, the Highway 101 Bike and Pedestrian Overcrossing proposes to construct a 14 and a half foot wide bike and pedestrian bridge that will cross US Highway 101 and connect East and West Santa Rosa, increasing access to academic, residential, commercial, and recreational areas, as well as transit hubs. During the environmental phase of this project, two build alternatives were considered. Alternative one was the Edwards Avenue and Elliott Avenue alignment uh, shown in the foreground of this, this uh, photo on the slide. And alternative two was the Range Avenue and Bear Cub Way alignment. In March 2021, the project development team, in conjunction with Caltrans as the lead environmental agency, 
certified the project environmental document and approved the Edwards Elliott alignment build alternative. Next slide, please. All right now we'll talk a little bit about uh, the milestones completed uh, to date, where this project um, kind of started. It's back in 2007, uh, this project uh, or a feasibility study was initiated for this project. And the feasibility study assessed the need for and feasibility of constructing a bicycle and pedestrian bridge over Highway 101 near the Santa Rosa Junior College campus in Santa Rosa. Ultimately, the study found there is a need to improve bike and pedestrian access across Highway 101 adjacent to the JC and that a freeway overpass structure would substantially address this need. Uh, completing the, uh, we finalized the feasibility study phase in November 20, uh, 2010, uh, which took us into the project initiation um, document phase. And during this phase of the project, um, a docu document was developed um, and approved by Caltrans that identified the project to be programmed for funding and construction on the state highway system. Uh, that phase was completed in October of 2016, uh, which then initiated the environmental phase. In the environmental phase, um, the project development team with Caltrans um, performed a robust analysis of uh, environmental um, considerations and also considered different build alternatives. Uh, that phase culminated or completed in March 2021, March of this year, um, with the selection of the Edwards Avenue build alternative, excuse me, the Edwards Avenue and Elliott Avenue build alternative, uh, and Caltrans uh, also approved the project. In June of this year, uh, $12 million in federal funding was awarded uh, through the Active Transportation Program by the Metropolitan Transportation Commission. Uh, and this funding was strictly programmed for construction. So uh, that was a very big step forward for um, the funding of, of to construct this project. Um, and then following the environmental clearance phase, uh, the city also awarded a design contract to BKF engineers. Uh, and we began the detailed design phase of this project in uh, June last month uh, of this year. Um, next slide, please. Uh, so some of the uh, some of the planned next steps um, in October of 2021, uh, following this meeting, uh, and after we collect comments from and input from the community, uh, we plan to bring uh, the overcrossing project um, design to the Santa Rosa Design Review Board, where uh, we'll present the overall structure that crosses the freeway, as well as the approaches, uh, and plan to plan that it will be discussed in detail. I'd like to also remind uh, everyone on this call that that meeting is also a public meeting. And uh, if you'd like to give us uh, comments uh, or just uh, comments, questions, um, or just generally be involved in the process, um, you're, uh, uh, you're encouraged to attend that meeting. Um, following the design review board meeting, uh, the, city, the city and um, our sub consultants will hold another community meeting to uh, report out on um, the direction given by the design review board, uh, and then also collect um, additional input from the community. Uh, and that'll occur in November of this year. Um, following that community meeting, uh, the city plans to um, work to develop the final uh, plans for the overcrossing project, uh, which will take us uh, into May 2023 when we anticipate design uh, completion. At that point, we'll uh, be ready to issue a, an advertisement for construction bids and uh, are anticipating beginning construction in October of 2023. Um, we also expect that the project will take two years to construct uh, and anticipate completion of construction in fall of 2025. Uh, next slide, please. I would now like to introduce Stephen Grover of Stephen Grover and Associates, who has been the project architect on the 101 bike and pedestrian overcrossing project since its inception in 2007. Stephen will provide a detailed discussion of the design considerations based on community feedback received during the environmental phase. Stephen. 
Thank you, Grant, and thank you everybody for spending your time with us tonight. Uh, before talking about your project, I'd like to share some reflections on how the design of overcrossings is evolving in general. Next slide, please. Most freeway overcrossings in use today were designed during the second half of the 20th century. They were designed with a single design goal in mind to make walking across the freeway possible. These crossings work, but they are, as you see in all of the images above, typically not very inviting. And for example, in the two lower images, often rather difficult to ride a bicycle on. Sometimes, as you see in the upper left, it's even hard to find the entrance. Next slide, please. The architectural spaces created in these older overcrossings commonly suffer from poor sight lines. So they can feel confined and users may feel isolated. This detracts from the safety and security <coughs> of these overcrossings. <clears throat> Excuse me, next slide, please. Beginning in the 1990s, agencies and municipalities in the United States started to expand the design goals for overcrossings beyond just making walking across possible. Broadly speaking, the goal for overcrossing design is increasingly understood as encouraging biking and walking. As a result, many new best design practices for the various aspects of overcrossing design have emerged. We intend to apply all of these latest best practices to your project. Here, for example, is my design for the approach to an overcrossing that endeavors to achieve a more positive user and viewer experience. Specifically, we introduced greater widths, clearer sight lines, gentler curves and slopes, and a more eye-catching structure than was norm at the time. Next, please. New overcrossing designs also increasingly include attractive landscaping. They highlight the entry points and are treated as welcome architectural contributions to our streetscapes. Next. In general, the design vocabulary for newer overcrossings has become more about linking positive streetscape experiences rather than imposing a freeway aesthetic on neighborhoods. Next. As a result, overcrossings increasingly employ alternatives to chain link fencing, for example, to provide for a more open feeling, such as with, as you see here on the left, woven wire mesh, or on the right, uh, cable mesh. Next. And overcrossings are increasingly seen as structures that celebrate our, our alternatives to driving rather than just utilitarian infrastructure to be tucked away. Thus, we also see greater attention to aesthetics, such as elegant flowing lines that can please the eye. In these images, you also see more attention to the aesthetics of lighting, lighting that is more safely configured to avoid glare spots and to just illuminate the traveled surface. Next. Finally, current best practices for overcrossing design trend, trend towards an emphasis on how both commuting cyclists and slow moving pedestrians can safely share a common pathway. Next. Now for your project, I'd like to now show you some of our early iterations of the design details that we've developed 
with these best practices, these newer best practices in mind. We will be looking tonight only at the Edwards Avenue and Elliott Avenue streetscape portions of your project. During the feasibility, project initiation, and environmental phases of this project, we have heard from you about a number of ideas and concerns. As Grant mentioned, most of your comments fall into the following categories, safety, security, parking, the bus stops on Edwards, and how the project can be a successful part of your neighborhood streetscape. After this presentation, we very much look forward to hearing more of your thoughts. Next slide. Just a little bit of housekeeping here. Um, the solar panels and student housing shown here on the right in the red circles uh, are new or currently under construction and thus they were not shown in the environmental documents for this project. One other note is that on all the slides where we're looking down from the top, we've, we've tried to keep north up so you don't get confused. Next slide. One safety concern we have heard about since 2007 is how to avoid conflicts between cyclists and pedestrians. The solution shown here, a two-way bike path and a separate sidewalk goes back to the 2010 feasibility study for this project. Next slide. More recently, people have expressed concerns about the safety at the West Touchdown adjacent to the Dixed Loading Dock driveway. Here shown is the design from 2016. It clearly designates the mixing area at the bottom of the ramp, but it also allowed for straight ahead travel as well as for entering the drive aisle of the parking lot as shown by the red arrows. And there were some concerns that allowing this through travel uh, could introduce some safety concerns. In response to your comments, we refined the design as shown above to restrict these ta travel paths more. We also added a few other safety features, which I'd be happy to discuss more during the discussion period. Next slide. One topic that touches on both safety and security is lighting. We want to work with you to achieve the right balance between a project that is well lit for safety and security, yet is pleasant and comfortable and not harshly overlit like a gas station. Next slide. Here's another view of that same area we just saw from a bird's eye point of view, um, seen now from the ground level. On the east side of the project, the, the ramp will connect to Elliott Avenue near the new Santa Rosa Junior College student housing that is currently under construction. Now, some people at the SRJC have noted the increasing interest on campus in walking and biking. And they asked us to study how to avoid conflicts at this East Touchdown area where multiple travel paths converge. Here's a diagram of cyclists' paths shown in solid lines and pedestrians in dash lines. And here's a view of the same public place that's created by this project at its East Touchdown 
this view is looking west along Elliott Avenue. Next. And here's another view from across the street. With regard to safety and security, I'd like to also note that the SRJC police station is immediately adjacent to the project on the east side, and that the Santa Rosa Police Department has made a commitment to monitor the project on an ongoing basis. Moreover, the active retail on the west side directly adjacent to the project should also help to activate the streetscape. And as we know, the more eyes on a street, the safer it is. Next slide. We can also use plants and landscape treatments like the ones shown here. Landscape that's nice to look at, but not so nice to touch or lie down in as deterrence to repose or encampment. And we really look forward to your detailed comments and input on landscaping. We understand there are existing parking concerns along Edwards Avenue. The number of parking spots along Edwards will remain unchanged by this project. We also understand that there are concerns that this project will, people wanting to visit the SRJC may choose to park on the west side. Now I know that the city staff has some ideas about how to address these concerns and that they look forward to getting your input on their ideas during the Q&A period. There is currently no street parking along Elliott Avenue and the project will not impact this street in any way. I'd like to mention, however, that we did do some design coordination with the team that is designing the new SRJ student housing. And we were, by working together, able to increase the number of parking lot spaces originally proposed for this housing. One topic we heard a lot about during the environmental phase was the bus stop on Edwards and how it disrupts the neighborhood, impedes car traffic, cars turning from Cleveland and attracts litter from people waiting for the bus. The good news is that it's official now, the bus stop on Edwards will actually be removed. Removal of the bus stop has opened up an opportunity for us to consider an alternate to a straight sidewalk along Edwards Avenue. As you see here in the bottom, we have the option now to create a, a slightly meandering sidewalk. Here's a view from the ground level of the new overhead structure, the landscaping underneath, with the straight sidewalk alternative. And here's the same view with the meandering sidewalk. I personally think this alternative works better. It creates perhaps a less regimented feeling uh, with the supports um, that it intertwines with. It also increases the width of the landscaped buffer between the sidewalk and the street. And here's the meandering sidewalk alternative as seen from one of the buildings across Edwards Avenue. In response to your comments, we are also working to minimize large flat surfaces that could attract graffiti or to treat them in a way that deters graffiti. One idea we are considering is vines, but vines that require climbing structures so that the extent of their growth is self-limiting and thus low maintenance. Here's a view of that same area we were just looking at, but at night.
We have also started to consider the plant palette for the landscaping for the project. Here shown is a palette based on shrubs and flowers. And on the next slide, this palette is predominantly about grasses. And here are a few other plants, colors, and textures that we are considering and would love to hear from you about. And I should mention now that Maura Baldwin, our project landscape architect, is with us tonight, and she will be very happy to discuss the landscaping further during our discussion period. One of the important design goals for this and basically every project is to retain trees wherever possible. Trees provide shade and many environmental benefits. As seen here marked in green, nearly all the major trees along the south side of Elliott Avenue and the east side of Armory Drive will be retained. A few minor trees and landscaping in this area will be replaced. Next slide. Along Edwards Avenue, there will be losses of the new trees along the north side of Edwards Avenue in the landscaping areas between Dick's parking lot and the street. All of these trees will be replaced as part of the new landscaping for the overcrossing project. Finally, we look forward to your thoughts on who will use this new overcrossing. Our analysis suggests the users will include the following. Your neighbors who are jogging, walking, or cycling for fitness. People from adjacent residential areas who want to run an errand or shop on the other side of the freeway and prefer not to drive. People using the smart pathway for north-south travel and then use this project to make an east-west connection. Also, people who are using the smart train to commute. And finally, people who are accessing transit, schools, and other services, or commuting to work on a bicycle. And with that, I would like to turn the meeting back over to Grant. Thank you, Stephen. Go to the next slide, please. At this time, uh, we'd like to hear from you, our community, uh, to receive your input. So uh, we will now move to the question and answer portion of this meeting. However, before we begin, I'll ask Lauren to review how you can participate by asking live questions uh, and comments. Thank you, Grant. Once Grant calls for public questions or comments, our co-host Steve Brown will announce for anyone wishing to ask a question or comment to raise their hand in Zoom. For individuals participating in the meeting by telephone, you can dial star nine to raise your hand. Steve will then call on the public one by one who have their Zoom hand raised. Steve will unmute your microphone so you may ask your question. Once you've raised your hand and asked your question or shared your input, your hand will be lowered and your microphone muted so our panelists may respond to your question. Thanks, Lauren. Steve, are we ready for the first meeting attendee to ask their question or provide a comment? Yes, we are. Uh, thank you, Grant. So I wanna remind you that anyone wishing to ask a question, uh, you should raise your hand and Zoom. If you're calling in, please dial nine to raise your hand. If you are a caller, um, uh, for privacy sake, I have changed your, I have changed your name to the uh, citizen in the last four digits of your phone number. And that's how I will refer to you when I call on you. So uh, to begin, the first person in the queue is Derek Wayne. Um, I'm gonna enable your permissions to speak. Uh, your microphone, Derek, has been unmuted. Uh, you may state your name for the record if you choose and go ahead and ask your question and make your comment. Hello, thank you. This is Derek Robertson. I would like to say I am so excited for this project. Thank you to everyone involved. Building alternatives to automobile transport is of course a huge part of meeting our climate change challenge. And I'm really excited about how this is gonna allow me to travel up and down the smart corridor and get east-west. I just had one comment. 
um, I'd like to suggest that the crosswalks at the touchdowns be raised to the level of the sidewalk grade because that's really nice and feels really safe. Thanks, Derek. Uh, really appreciate your comment and enthusiasm for the project. Um, Thank you. All right, Steve, uh, is there another uh, question or comment in the queue? Definitely, Graham. Um, the next person in the queue uh, is uh, David Harris. Uh, David, I'm going to enable your permissions to speak. Uh, your microphone has been unmuted. And you may state your name for the record if you choose, and then ask your question or make your comment. Yes, I'll state my name for the record, David Harris, and I've been watching this project for a long time, as Stephen Grover knows, and I am very happy to see the progress that's been made. Uh, you remember we looked at Elliot many years ago, and there were uh, obstructions, and the progress in JC planning has uh, uh, opened the way over there to in many ways and uh, uh, rather than having a par parking structure at that corner of Elliot in Armory uh, we've got room for a good landing there and uh, I'm also very happy to see the, the progress we've been able to make in alternatives for uh, the Edwards uh, landing. Um, I the um, I guess I, I have a question of how much you've considered xerophytic plants. I put that question in the comments also. That would be a question um, that I've recently been down to Monterey and observed a lot of xerophytic plants down there that, uh, you know, succulents that uh, can survive uh, uh, not much, you know, not much attention and not getting much water. So, um, that's uh, one question comment. The, the other thing I'd like to bring up is, I think about the possibilities that we might think farther about how to integrate this with uh, the smart North station, the multi-use path, and the fact that there is an existing uh, path along Pollen Creek uh, going east toward the freeway. It doesn't quite get to the freeway. And then on the east side of the freeway, there's a long Pollen Creek path on the south side of the county center. And ideally we could get those things all tied together. Uh, we'll take another overcrossing, I think at Pollen Creek, but um, I will stop at that. I am very happy to see the progress that's been made and I look forward to the fall meeting. Thank you, David. Really appreciate your comments and questions. And I think I'm just gonna uh, clarify real quick. I, I can't quite, uh, I don't think I can restate the word that you're using to describe the plants, but I believe you were referring to succulents. I think there was a question out there that I saw pop up. Uh, and I think it's succulent type plants and, and maybe cacti are what you were referring to uh, when you mentioned those plant types. And then you also um, referred to kind of future planning and what the, if the city had any uh, plans for connecting multi-use paths and bike paths to this, um, to, to the overcrossing once it's completed. Um, and I'm gonna actually um, ask Nancy uh, Adams, our, the city of Santa Rosa's transportation planner, uh, to maybe just give a brief um, overview of, of what the future plans are to connect for our uh, multi-use path uh, and, and bike network to this project. Nancy. Hey, thanks. This is uh, Nancy Adams, and I'm also in the Transportation and Public Works Department. And, you know, um, we're, we're always looking for, for those connections um, without um, that are um, identified in our bike and ped master plan. And actually, I hadn't thought about the, the Pollen Creek one. So thank you for, for bringing that one up, David. Um, we are certainly, you know, making every effort to make a seamless connection to um, you know, the obvious class one path along the smart um, rail corridor. Um, so um, we, we can certainly, you know, reach out to our, our city uh, water department who really has um, more, you know, more connection to the creeks along our path and, and see what kind of uh, status that Pollen Creek has. But um, yeah, I, I think those are all appreciated comments. And, and the whole goal of this is to, to keep the seamless connections um, for our bikes and uh, pedestrians. So thank you. Thanks, Nancy. And 
Uh, again, thank you, David. Really appreciate your comments and questions. Grant, could we have Maura say, uh, if check in with her and see if she has anything to say about succulents? Absolutely, yes. Thanks, Stephen. I uh, appreciate, appreciate that. Yeah, hi there, this is Maura Baldwin. I'm the landscape architect on the project and I'm so happy to be part of this team and working with the uh, community to create this beautiful space. Um, regarding xerophytic uh, plants, um, uh, the entire plant palette will absolutely be low water use, whether, and I'm sure there are ways to incorporate succul succulents into that. Um, and it'll be, so it'll be low water use, tough and, um, and very, you know, very, uh, and, and attractive at the same time. So um, drought tolerant plants are actually part of the state mandated water efficient landscape ordinance. So I'm essentially sort of mandated to um, provide landscapes that are low water use. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Mara. Appreciate the input. All right, Steve, uh, do we have another question or comment in the queue? And we sure do, Grant. The uh, next uh, person in our queue is Joy Wakefield. Uh, Joy, I'm going to enable your permissions to speak. Uh, your microphone has been unmuted. You can state your name for the record if you choose and then uh, ask your question or make your comment. Yeah, hi. Um, and I'm totally for this plan. I just want to start off that way. Unfortunately, I live on Raccoon Lane, which is directly across from uh, Dick's loading zone. And I've lived here 20 years, and of course, Dick's fairly new. Um, we've had lots of problems with Dick's about that loading, the way it's uh, designed. You have like 55 and 60 foot trucks coming in and backing into that. And a lot of these drivers don't do very well. So I'm sure you're familiar with the entrance to uh, Raccoon Lane. And we've had to put up posts to limit them. And Dix won't do anything about it. So I guess my question is, is that going to remain as their loading entrance? Because also, um, it looks uh, on your pictures and stuff that nobody ever parks in that um, parking place on that side. It's packed all the time. I don't know where people come from to park there, but they use it constantly. And Dix is, you know, using and loading. And it's not only the huge trucks, they've always got uh, FedEx and, you know, all, all the different uh, companies. So as you can see, we are probably about 40, 50 feet from the entrance to your new, um, your, your new entrance to your uh, overpass. Could you tell me what's going to be happening with dicks and are you still, are they still going to be loading there? Um, yes, that's, that's a good question, Joy. Um, thanks for bringing that up. Uh, so at this time, um, we did consider the, uh, in the environmental document, consider uh, Dick's loading access and um, as part of the project plans to make no alterations to, to that um, loading zone uh, for Dick's at this point. May I chime in on that, Grant? Of course, you yeah, please. Um, joy, it's really a joy, if you don't mind me saying so, to hear how the mystery of how the trucks get in and out of there um, resolved. Um, now I hear that they back in, uh, and I can imagine that it's quite difficult for them. Um, we would really like to take your, I've made careful notes. We really like to take your comments under advisement and, um, and look more closely at, at that. Uh, we'll also update our images to show that portion of the parking lot fully occupied to give a little bit better representation of what you say is actually happening there. Thanks, Stephen. Okay. Going back to, to oh, Steve, sorry. yeah, is there another, uh, sorry, <laughs> sorry, Steve. <laughs> uh, is there okay. another comment or question in, there, in, the, in the queue? 
There sure are. There are a few more. So uh, the next person in our queue is Christine Culver. Uh, Christine, I'm going to enable your permissions and your microphone is unmuted. You can state your name for the record if you choose and then ask your question or make a comment. Thank you very much and hopefully you can hear me. I can, yes. Great. Uh, my name is Christine Culver and I am joining you today representing uh, Sonoma County Supervisor Chris Corsi and he wanted to uh, just let you know that he is a longtime supporter of this project and very uh, excited to see it moving forward. So I want to just state that and then as a uh, community member and a SRJC neighbor myself, um, I'm very excited about this, having been very involved in this for over 20 years. I'm so pleased to see it move forward to this, to this point. Um, I do have some suggestions that I'd like to make. Um, first is that I would like to see that the sidewalk across the overcrossing be raised. I couldn't tell if it was or not in the uh, drawings, but I would suggest that that would help delineate where the pedestrian should be and where the bike rider should be. And I think that would help with some conflict there. And, uh, and I also want to say that I think Stephen Grover has done a fantastic job on this. And I, I wanted to put my appreciation there. Um, I do want to speak to the meandering sidewalk. Um, I strongly encourage you not to go with meandering sidewalks. While I think that they are pleasing to look at, they're not very efficient for the person who is using them for transportation. And I think we need to stop building our um, facilities for the, the drivers, for their views, but also we need to be very um, cognizant that this is um, a facility for pedestrians and bike riders and Pedestrians don't want to be wandering the sidewalks back and forth when they're carrying a bunch of groceries or they're hauling up kids. So um, please take that into consideration. And thank you again for your time. I really appreciate this. Thank you, Christine. And uh, very happy to hear a uh, you know, representative from one of our supervisors uh, join the meeting tonight and uh, happy to uh, hear some support from uh, Supervisor Corsi. Um, Stephen, uh, well, sorry, Christine, to go back to, I think your first comment was on the um, uplifted sidewalk on the, the deck of the overcrossing itself. Um, Stephen, do you wanna just take a moment? We can look at slide 48 and uh, I, I think gives a little bit better view of what we're planning to do here. If I understood the, the question correctly, uh, do you wanna take a second to look at this, Stephen? Yeah, sure. Sure. And, and Christine, thank you um, for those comments. Um, we'll, one of the things that I just made a note of is we'll look at the total travel distance comparing the meandering to the straight sidewalk and make sure we get back with that information just as a data point. Um, regarding the raised sidewalk, yes, this has been part of the project for many years and it's a feature that has worked well on a couple of other bicycle and pedestrian projects that I've designed in the Bay Area. Uh, as you can see here, it consists of a sidewalk and a very, very, very slight angled curb so that it's safe for both wheelchairs and cyclists if they run into it, but also delineates the sidewalk and separates it psychologically from the faster moving traffic of the two way uh, bike path. Thanks for touching on both, both the meandering side sidewalk and the uh, raised sidewalk on the uh, overcrossing, Stephen. Steve, do we have another question or comment in the queue? Yes, we do. Uh, the next person in our, in our queue is Eris Weaver. And uh, I'm gonna enable your permissions, Eris, and your microphone has now been unmuted. You can state your name for the record if you choose and then ask your question or make your comment. Would help if I unmuted first, wouldn't it? Um, I'm Eris Weaver, the executive director of the Sonoma County Bicycle Coalition. And we have been watching this project with great interest for, oh gosh, over 10 years now. Uh, so very, so happy that it's um, progressing along because our, our East West Alternatives College and Steel Lane are so ugly. 
uh, I don't mean that just visually, but safety wise and experientially to um, bicycle on. And we so need that, uh, that connector across the freeway. Um, a couple de, of... De la autopista. A couple of questions uh, and Unas comments preguntas. that I have. Uh, I'm hearing someone Sobre else tengo... speak. I don't know what's going on with you technically. It sounds like it might be the interpreter. Um, is, is I want a second, uh, I think it must have been Dr. Harris who mentioned the being sure that everything connects well with other paths. That's something that happens so many places where things get built you know, in separate pieces and then the connection between them um, doesn't always uh, mesh very well. And that that's very frustrating when one is trying to get from uh, point A to point B. I know the city's already looking at some improvements on um, Armory and, you know, LA and some of the other streets. And so I'm, I'm hoping just that all those other connections um, continue to be made as seamlessly as possible. Uh, connected with that, um, I know the area uh, on the Elliott Avenue side, um, since I've been in the past both a student and a faculty member at the JC, I'm not as familiar with the area, uh, the touchdown by Dix on Edwards and what, um, you know, what, what the natural user, you know, pathway would be for folks coming back over. And I'm wondering if there might be some need for any small amount of wayfinding to direct uh, cyclists coming from the JC side to down and over, um, a, you know, the best route to get wherever they're going there. Um, but I, I can't be more specific than that. As I said, I don't uh, I don't shop there, and so I don't really have as much of a physical um, sense of what that looks like. But hearing folks talk about trucks and all of that stuff, um, it does does make me uh, worry a little bit. I will add my voice to the others. Um, putting the kibosh on the wandering sidewalk. I live in, uh, I've spent most of my time in Sonoma County living in Katati and Rohnert Park where there are numerous very windy sidewalks that I never see anybody actually walking on. And when I myself do have to walk on those areas, they, they do, they add, um, they add to your amount of, of uh, distance you're walking. And I think you could measure it. And it's, it's not just that it adds literal distance, it, it, I think the psychological experience of the distance that it adds might be greater than the actual distance, depending on how long and how curved it is. But if I'm walking somewhere uh, across the freeway, I'm going somewhere to do a particular task. And it's not like a path for somebody to be taking a stroll on, right? They're trying to go to school or the store or go home or something. So um, as much as it looks nice in the picture for the person who's actually walking, I don't think the wandering um, sidewalk is uh, particularly useful. Um, okay, I think that's it. Thank you very much for putting all of this together. Thanks a lot, Eris. <clears throat> really appreciate those comments. Um, and. You know, I'm going to just go ahead and um, circle back to a comment that you made about um, the Edwards uh, side of the touchdown area, and and you know I'll I'll make a I guess a comment that the city is currently looking into an additional or excuse me uh, an independent project that uh, will make you know some some improvements to update uh, bike facilities and um, make you know potential other improvements along that. Um, the Edwards uh, Edwards Avenue. Uh, we're currently looking at scoping that and uh, and looking for funding as well. Um, and then you made a comment about wayfinding. Um, that is a comment that we've we've uh, heard from a number of community members, and um, that is something that uh, will be included as part of this project. There'll probably be um, a number of of different wayfinding wayfind. Or, uh, locations in which uh, a wayfinder will, will direct you to, signage, uh, et cetera. Um, so thank you. Okay, uh, um, great. Uh, we have, uh, looks like one more hand up. Um, we have Jack uh, Swearingen. Uh, Jack, I'm going to enable your permissions. Uh, your microphone um, has been unmuted. 
So uh, go ahead and uh, state your name for the record if you choose, and then ask your question or make a comment. Hi, I'm Jack Swearingen. I chair Friends of SMART, and my interest and involvement in this project goes back as far as several of these folk, um, including Gary Helfrick, who was the chair of Sonoma County Bike Coalition uh, years ago, uh, and David Harris and others. So I'm, I'm listening to some of my colleagues from this uh, pursuit for many years. My angle as chair of Friends of Smart has always been access between the Smart Station at, on Garnville Road or uh, um, what else is it called, uh, Steel Lane, and or the JC. And getting people to use the train to get to and from the JC has always been my interest, except that um, when the pandemic began, I started cycling because I couldn't do the exercise routines I had done before. And since that time, I have now biked 3,000 miles. And so I, I learned many of the bike paths and the bike uh, access points and difficult places. And I really support this, not just from the commuter point of view, but also now from a bicyclist point of view. So uh, that puts me in the camp with uh, <laughs> some of the others. Um, I think that when we started, was it seven, 10 years ago, Dix uh, was opposed to the idea, at least they feared, they were concerned about losing vis visibility from Highway 101. However, this design, in my view, is so inviting that I think Dix should be delighted. It will attract uh, eyes on and people who are just using the overcrossing to get to and from will say, hey, I'm right at Dick's, I should stop in there. I think it's a great attraction. Um, and therefore it's great. And that's my closing comment. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. Uh, really appreciate your comments. Um, all right, uh, are there any other um, questions or comments, Steve? There are, Grant, I spoke too soon. We've got a few more that have popped in. The uh, next person in our queue is David Harris. Uh, David, I'm gonna enable your permissions. Uh, your microphone has been unmuted. Uh, you can state your name for the record if you so choose and then ask your question or make a comment. Uh, thank you, yes, I'm speaking for a second time, uh, but this presentation and the questions have been the whole topic of wayfinding has caused me to think a bit more about the situation there. In directing people back toward the front side of Dick's, I think is an appropriate thing to do because that then gives you access into Cottingtown on the east side, into the stores to the north and, and uh, northwest there um, more directly than getting people further down Edwards before they go north into the Cotting Town parking lot. So uh, I would think that would be a positive and uh, from Dick's standpoint, but I think from everybody's standpoint in reality. So I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you for that comment, David. And, and I do believe uh, that is the direction uh, where we plan on taking is to, uh, you know, other than if, uh, I guess it would be directing pedestrian traffic that is headed back towards Cottingtown, uh, more towards uh, Cleveland and from, from that um, entrance to, to the Cottingtown um, area or, or north of there. But the, um, I believe the most direct access to the smart station would be down Elliott to, um, I can't think, I'm, losing, I, I'm sorry, I've lost the, the cross street uh, down there. I wanna say, say it's Jennings, but I don't think it's Jennings. Um, Anyway, the, the cross street uh, west that takes you to, to, to Kernville. Okay, uh, we will move on to our, our next person in our queue. It looks like it is Frank Haig. Uh, Frank, I'm going to enable your permissions and your microphone has been unmuted. You may state your name for the record if you choose and then ask your question or make a comment.
Frank, I believe you are muted. If you would unmute. Can you hear me? I can now. Thank you. Okay, Frank. great. I have two questions. One is on slide 23. We can't see slide 23. Can you go back or not? We can. Yes. Okay, slide 20. No, 22. Uh, that's not the one. 23. Oh, along Dick Sporting Goods there. Well, uh, maybe 21. No, I'll try 21. Uh, Dick Sporting Goods. Yes, okay. That loading area that was mentioned earlier, that really is going to be a very difficult problem. I don't know how that's going to be solved because those big trucks coming and going. Uh, and I don't think you can ask Dick's to change their loading dock. That's my opinion. Number two, I don't see what you're going to do with that uh, bus stop that's there, that was there. Is that going to be eliminated? And number three, uh, about that crosswalk. You see that crosswalk going across when they get off the, off the uh, yeah, that's the crosswalk. What's going to happen to that uh, uh, bus stop there? And then the other one was go back to the other slide so I can show you. That was 21, slide 21. Yeah, you see the crosswalk there. Is there going to be a signage there or a flashing uh, device? Or how, what's going to happen? What kind of device is going to be there to protect or to warn drivers coming in up, up and down Edwards? There's a lot of traffic on Edwards, and they're very fast. Maybe you can ask, answer those three questions for me. Thanks a lot. Absolutely, Frank. Yeah, so um, we'll just, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I think Natalina, um, Natalina Bernardi with BKF Engineers is our consultant on this project. Um, I'm gonna ask you if you could just speak briefly to the um, turning analysis we did at the at, at Dix to uh, discuss the, the loading dock. Um, but first, I'm going to go ahead and uh, jump ahead to question two uh, and, and three. Um, so question two was uh, regarding um, the bus stop elimination. So currently the bus stop on, on Edwards uh, serves two transit agencies, Amtrak and uh, the Mendocino Transit Authority, MTA. Um, and MTA connects to this bus stop currently only to uh, as a connector to the Amtrak um, service. Um, by the end of this year, uh, the city's transit uh, department uh, or division has um, worked with, with Amtrak to relocate their Amtrak service point uh, to the downtown transit area, transit mall on 2nd Street. And with that relocation of Amtrak, um, there's really, uh, the need for MTA to also go to this um, location is, is pretty much eliminated. So their service point will also be moved to the second street, um, the second street location uh, for, for the bus or the transit mall. Um, and then just to talk briefly about the crossing and um, I believe you're referring to what's, uh, what's called a, a rectangular rapid flashing beacon, an RRFB. Um, we have not uh, at this crossing. Thanks, Lauren, for bringing that back up. Um, to my knowledge, I don't. I don't think that we have looked at this. Um, you did make a comment about um, high-speed vehicles. Um, I will say that there is. Um, we have traf traffic counts for the, for uh, Edwards indicate there's low traffic volumes, but we have received um, comments and concerns about the the uh, speed that. Uh, vehicles travel on Edwards. And so um, part of maybe some of those improvements that uh, I was referring to uh, earlier as an independent project from the overcrossing project would also be to uh, install some traffic calming measures. And there's a number of different um, options out there. So I won't uh, speak to exactly what we may be doing. Um, as, as I mentioned, we're still in the scoping phase. Um, but uh, either with the overcrossing project and probably with the overcrossing project, we'll, we will definitely take a look at um, the need to add additional um, uh, indication that there will be a uh, pedestrian crossing at this crosswalk, uh, either through uh, rectangular rapid flashing beacon or other means. Um, 
Natalina, did you want to touch real briefly on the, the turning analysis for the Dix loading dock? Sure, sure. Um, you know, we we needed a when we reviewed the the concept, um, we did not want to affect Dick's and uh, Dick's loading dock because they did not have an alternative location for the loading. Um, so we did confirm that with with the manager of the store how the vehicles enter and back into the loading dock, and and basically re ran the turning maneuvers similar to what they do today to confirm that this pro this project and all the elements that we're proposing that you see here do not conflict with that. Um, that turning maneuver did, as I mentioned, require backup, did require going into Edwards and backing into the, um, into the loading dock, but it did not require interference or interfacing with the proposed cross block location, which was important to us. Thank you, Natalina. All right, Steve, is there um, another uh, question or comment in the queue? Sure, our Grant. Um, our next uh, person in the queue is Derek Wayne. Uh, Derek, I'm going to enable your permissions. Uh, your microphone has been unmuted. Uh, you can state your name for the record if you wish, and uh, then ask your question or make your comment. Hello. Hello, thank you. I'd just like to echo some comments that I heard from Jack Swearingen and others about how much of a win this is for Cottingtown and the stores in Cottingtown, especially Whole Foods. I can speak to my experience as an urban cyclist, somebody who loves to run his errands on foot or on his bike, that being able to go to Whole Foods from the Santa Rosa Junior College or even from Santa Rosa High School is pretty awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Derek. Appreciate your comment. Steve, is there another comment or question? And there is. Uh, our next person in the queue is Tom Helm. Tom, um, I'm gonna enable your permissions. Uh, your microphone has been unmuted um, and um, you can state your name for the record if you so choose, then ask your question or make a comment. Yes, thank you. I'm Tom Helm. And like others, I've watched this uh, project for some years and I'm very happy to see that it's getting close to um, reality. I'm, I wanna refer back to slide 21, if you would please. So basically my comment is about how bicycles and cars will share a lane. There's not, the Edwards Avenue isn't wide enough to have bike lanes and car travel. And so you can see near the left side of the photograph, there's um, Cheryl's on the road. I think a lot of people don't know what Cheryl's or how they're supposed to be used as far as cycling and a little education would be good. One of your signages as they get off of the overcrossing could say, could explain what a Cheryl is supposed to be for. And, and you could use this slide as an example of what is really, that's not the right way to make a Cheryl, um, a bicycle travel on uh, Edwards Avenue. You can see down at the bottom right, there's a car in the lane and the bike rider is close to the curb and it looks like the car will probably overtake the bike rider. The reason there's a Cheryl out there in the street is because the, the lane is not wide enough for both a car and a bike to share and a bicycle should just what they call take the lane. The Cheryls are there with the point of the Chevrons intended to be the path of travel for the bicycle. If the bicycle is out there on the Cheryl, the car definitely will see the cyclist and use caution to pass around it instead of try to squeeze by it. So I'm just saying that I think if Cheryls are going to be on the road, it would be good to have a sign explaining what they're there for and how to use them. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. 
really appreciate that suggestion. Um, and I, I think uh, something we'll definitely look into and um, whether it's a sign or some other uh, way to, you know, spread some information about how to use Sheros effectively. And um, sounds like we, we may need to uh, update our imagery here a little bit too. So I really thank you for pointing that out. Steve, is there uh, another question? In the queue, comment. Actually, actually, Grant, that is our last uh, question from um, our attendees. Um, Grant, this is Natalina. I noticed there was a question on the chat was, asking me, if me. where the. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, it was asking if we knew where the Amtrak bus stop was, would be relocated to. Uh, Has that been decided? Yes. Uh, the Amtrak. Uh, bus station will be relocated to the um, second street transit mall in downtown Santa Rosa. I believe it's between uh, B street and, and Santa Rosa Avenue, I believe is, yeah. Uh, on, oh well, yeah, on second street between B street and Santa Rosa Avenue is where the transit mall is located. And that will be relocated. Uh, the Amtrak station will be relocated uh, by the end of the year is what I'm told. Um, and I also wanted to, I guess, just check in with uh, Steve or um, Lauren. Have you guys been monitoring the chat to see if um, um, there are any questions that popped up that we haven't addressed yet, uh, like Natalina was uh, referring to? Okay, um, I'm looking now through our chat to see if there's anything that has not already been answered. Uh, or directly asked by one of our attendees. Um, give me just one moment. No problem. I actually do not see any questions that have not either been directly asked or answered. Thanks, Steve. Mm -hmm. um, so just uh, a quick summary, uh, the 101 bike and pedestrian overcrossing project uh, is gonna build a uh, 14 and a half foot wide uh, shared bike and pedestrian bridge over US 101. It'll connect uh, academic, residential, uh, commercial, um, and uh, recreational areas and transit hubs. Um, we're really looking forward to um, developing the design of this project and maintaining um, an active community uh, participation through this. Um, as a reminder, we will be having um, a, there will be a design review board meeting uh, it's, uh, anticipated for October uh, 2021. So in a few months here, uh, where we'll be presenting a more detailed design uh, with the approaches and the overcrossing, uh, that is a public meeting. And uh, I'd really like to encourage everyone here uh, who's been involved and uh, beyond in the community to uh, participate in that meeting to provide us uh, input on uh, what you think this project should be. Um, and then we will have a, a meeting following the uh, design review board meeting uh, in November of 2021. Um, so with no further questions, uh, I'd like to express my sincere appreciation and thank the members of the public and all the panelists and hosts for participating tonight. Uh, we appreciate your time. Uh, we appreciate you taking the time uh, to listen to us and provide your uh, input on the Santa Rosa Highway 101 bike and pedestrian overcrossing project. Um, I want to remind everyone that uh, we have a project specific webpage uh, for, the, uh, for this project uh, at www.srcity.org slash bike ped overcrossing. Uh, where you can find current information on the project status and subscribe for email updates on the project. Um, I also wanna note that, uh, well, there's the project website right there on the slide, um, but uh, there's my contact information as well. So uh, please um, feel free to contact me if you have any questions about this project or uh, any other projects going on in the city. I'm happy to work with you and um, take your input or questions. Thank you again and uh, have a good night.